Welcome to Block of the Month at the Fabric Barn 2023. This is lesson five. Um, the Fabric Barn is in Rosebud, Texas, if you didn't know. I'm Margaret, I'm your instructor, and um, let's get started. So, lesson number five. We are going to collect light two inch squares. And before I forget, Last number, number four, I went through the whole thing saying two and a half inches. Everything that I said two and a half inches on, it's two inches. So uh, these are two inch squares and you will be getting eight of them. And then you will get two inch dark squares and you'll get eight of those. And you will get two inch by three and a half inch rectangles and you'll take those and then two inch by three and a half inch darks and you will get eight of those. Make sure they're all different colors that you get um, so that you have a nice assortment of them. So I have all different kinds here. And the same with the white, with the light colors. I have all different ones and the same with your squares. You will get those out. Then you will make two plastic bags, one that says D1 and one that says D2. And that corresponds with your finished blocks. You will also need the eight blocks from last month that you already made. So they will be D1 and D2. Uh, they will be in D1 and D2. So um, that is from last month. So we're going to get started. Um, we will take light, two inch, and you're going to either draw a line on the back of it. Again, I use friction pens. I try to not have regular pens even close to my quilting because I had an accident that was not good. I just bumped one and it hit a white background and I had to redo the block that it was in. You'll draw a line from corner to corner and you will do the same with your darks, um, drawing a line. The other way you can do this is take and fold it just like we did last month and press it from corner to corner. And usually I will do this on the iron. If I'm gonna press it, I wanna make sure it's got a nice pressed line that I can see on my machine when I stitch. And then the third way is the way that I prefer and I will show you how to do that when we get to the sewing machine. Um, you're going to, again, watch your orientation on this. So I am going to take a light and a dark and lay them with the line running from this corner to this corner this time. We had it running this way last time. We're going to have it running this way this time. So. When I'm sewing, I'm going to start from this corner and stitch to that corner. Last month, we started at the point and stitched out. That's so that we can stitch one thread towards that corner. And we will do the same with the black, with the darks. We'll put a light one on the corner and watch your orientation. So it is running like this and we'll be stitching one thread towards this corner. So we're going to take a break right now and I'm going to move to the sewing machine and I'll be right back with you. Okay, hi ladies, I'm back um, and we're going to start sewing these. So we're going to take the, the light um, 
quarter inch, I mean a, a rectangle, and we're going to lay the square that we had the line drawn on it. We're going to lay it from corner to corner like this. And we're going to start, I told you wrong in the beginning, we're going to start at this corner and stitch just one thread towards this corner. So, and you'll see that I have my sew on sew off right here so I don't lose my threads. And I'm just going to stitch right straight up that line, just keeping it one thread towards that edge. Okay. That's the first one. Then the second way we did it, what option was when having it folded in half like this and laying it on and be sure you watch your orientation on these. Lay it on. This corner is not that and lay that one and right along that fold line and you're going to stitch right straight up it and one thread towards that side from the fold line and then that's the second way option now the third option is using blue tape which is my favorite so my needle is down, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to lay it right from the needle straight out and I have line, I have straight lines on my, on my plate so I can lay the, line these two up with that. Don't put this over your feed dogs, put sticker tape right down next to it, be sure it stays straight. I, I pretty much always leave my blue tape on my sewing machine, so I don't usually have to do this very often. Okay, so there it is. And this little ridge on your plate a lot of times gets in the way, and it'll flip your, your seam. The blue tape actually helps it ride over that underneath your sewing machine. So now we're going to take the third one, Lay the, the dark square on the rectangle, right sides together, and we'll just slide that right up underneath there against the needle, and this end we're going to lay right on that line on your blue tape, and we're going to stitch it. And as long as you're washing your fabric against this blue line, you're not going to, your needle will go where it belongs as long as you're following this line. So I don't even look at my needle. I only look at the fabric going along that line. So then we're going to do the same thing with the dark. And my favorite way, of course, is this last one using the blue tape. So watch your orientation. It's the same, same, same orientation as the light. And we're just going to stitch right straight up that line. I'm watching this point, this tip. And you can see I'm chaining these. That's my favorite way to do it also is chain. And then we're going to put this one on here. I'm going to get my sew on sew off from that end, put it under here, and then we're going to clip that. 
Now we're going to clip them apart and we'll check and see if they match. So we're going to fold this up here like this. And it's really good. So that means I can take and cut the back off the back two layers at quarter inch. And we'll check this one. This one isn't quite so good. I think I'm going to restitch this, so I'm not going to cut it right now. We'll take this one. This is the one I did using the blue tape. It's the best one of all. And we'll do the two dark ones. And I always check before I cut it so that I know that they match up at the corner so I still have a rectangle when I'm left, when I'm, when I'm finished. Okay, and that's these. So we're going to take a quick break while I press these and gather my um, blocks from last month, and I will see you in a minute. Okay, ladies, I'm back. I've ironed the uh, our rectangles. On these, we want to iron the seam going towards the rectangle, not towards the tip. So they all are ironed that direction. And the reason for that is we're going to take last month's, and we'll take these two from this month, the light ones. We'll take these two from this month, the light ones. And you can see that they go together like this. Oops. Don't want to match anything. So I'm going to take these two and you'll see there's a V. We'll flip them over. And we can lay that seam right on there. This one's going up. This one's going down. Match our corners you want to pin them you can I just like to sew them straight so go straight down that line Watch these corners and I'm gonna do the next one Match them up. And I'm going to cut this back one off so you can see. So when I open it up, there is my square. And on this one, we are going to iron it. Let me check and see. We're going to iron it towards this direction. So you can finger press it. And then when you have time, go over to the iron and iron all of them at one time. So that's the light with the dark V. Now we're going to do the dark ones from last month and this month, and we'll put them together. And I try not to have any fabrics that match. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. And then 
this one. Match up that seam. Corner. on my sew off. So they're all going to iron towards the right. There's the two of the light ones and here's two of the dark ones. Now our light, we're going to put in D1 bag, zip it up, remember to zip it up so you don't have them fall out, and our darks will be put in D2. And that's it for today for lesson number five. So I'll see you next month for lesson number six. Bye!